tonight. A new urgent care center in Regina is complete, but it's not ready to open. Next up, finding enough staff. Also, a precedent-setting case. The parents of a teen who shot and killed four of his classmates will spend the next 10 to 15 years in prison. Plus, while everyone is still talking about yesterday's eclipse, we take you to a unique observatory in BC that uses sound, not sight, to observe the sun. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Tuesday, April 9th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thank you for watching. The construction of Regina's new urgent care centre is complete. It's the first of its kind in the province, and the government says the facility will be an alternative to emergency departments, which are often overcrowded. But before the centre can open, the health authority has to find enough staff. Liam O'Connor reports. The urgent care centre will operate for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's located on North Albert Street in Regina and is being touted by the government as a way to reduce emergency room wait times and provide mental health and addiction support. Access for people uh, that may be having a, uh, a mental health crisis or may have unfortunately entered a life of addictions and are, are ready to make a change to have those, uh, that access point so that they can access those services immediately. The mental health and addictions unit will have its own entrance and waiting room for discreet and confidential support but staffing the center could be problematic. We are aware that there is definitely a shortage of psychiatric nurses in Saskatchewan. So while the demand is increasing, um, as we know, there's an increased need for mental health and addiction services. And as that need is increasing, unfortunately, our membership continues to age. And um, almost 50% of our members are eligible for retirement at any time. The head of the Psychiatric Nurses Association supports the urgent care centre, but she says they need more training spots. They have 104, but need at least 120. Typically, we have three qualified applicants for every available seat. So we do know that people want to enter into psychiatric nursing. They're just unable to secure a seat when they're applying. Regina's urgent care centre will require 125 full-time equivalent staff. Another urgent care centre is planned for Saskatoon and the Premier is promising more in other parts of the province. The Nurses' Union also approves, but says recruiting nurses to those centres will leave holes in other parts of the health care system. So we know that, you know, people are coming, going to come and work, want to work at the urgent care centre because they're finding themselves in a workplace that is in such chaos, is so short of nurses. Chronic short staffing and burnout at both the General and the Pasqua hospitals. What is this Premier's plan to actually staff that urgent care centre? Premier Mo says there are various recruitment initiatives underway that will help staff the facility and get it up and running by this summer. Liam O'Connor, CBC News. The NDP says the provincial government needs to do more to get surgical wait times under control. New data from the Canadian Institute for Health Information shows Saskatchewan had the worst median wait times for knee and hip surgeries in 2023. The median wait time for knee surgery is 318 days. For hip surgeries, it's 232. The NDP says that is not good enough, and the health minister says they know they have work to do. The fact is that we have been dead last in Canada every single year since 2019. Nearly every year that since that Premier took office, Saskatchewan people have been waiting longer than any other province. Okay. Waiting for surgery severely lowers the quality of life for patients. If you compare from 2023 to 2022, we are having a more hip and knee replacement surgeries completed in Saskatchewan. Is it where it needs to be? No, not yet. And that's why we continue to work with our surgical teams to, uh, to create and provide the investments that we need to to support them. The health minister confirmed the contract signed last year with a private clinic in Calgary to provide hip and knee surgeries has been extended. It was to expire in March and instead now runs until September. The original contract cost the province $6 million. The Ministry of Health says the contract's extension carries no extra cost. A 15-year-old is in hospital recovering after a daylight stabbing in downtown Saskatoon. 
Police say it happened on a sidewalk at 21st Street East and 2nd Avenue South around 4 o'clock Monday afternoon. A 24-year-old man is charged with aggravated assault. Police say the victim and the suspect did not know each other. Officers identified the suspect based on video footage and he was arrested Monday night. The government of Alberta is looking to join Saskatchewan government's court battle over its pronoun policy. In February, a Court of King's Bench justice ruled that a court challenge by UR Pride can proceed. It's over the province's law that requires parental consent for kids under 16 who want to change their names or pronouns at school. The province had invoked the notwithstanding clause to escape a legal challenge. Alberta is now seeking intravenous status on the, on the case before the Saskatchewan Court of Appeal. Saskatchewan's Minister of Justice says she's pleased to have support. This is really an issue of, of parliamentary sovereignty. Um, there, there is a very important you know, constitutional issue at play here about uh, whether the notwithstanding clause is the final word when a legislature invokes it. And, and um, that's one I think that, that um, certainly Alberta is interested now in, in pursuing constitutionally um, at the Court of Appeal and, and we hope other provinces as well. According to the statement, Alberta will try to show that Saskatchewan's use of Section 33 of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms should have prevented the Court of King's Bench from reviewing the constitutionality of the Parents' Bill of Rights. UR Pride launched legal action in September. The Parents' Bill of Rights was made law in October. Alberta has promised to enact similar changes to its education policy in the fall. A CBC News investigation has uncovered a Canadian DNA laboratory that knowingly delivered prenatal paternity test results that routinely identified the wrong biological fathers. The bad results were delivered around the world for years by the unregulated lab. Jorge Barrera has the story. Coral Mayer was 19 when an unplanned pregnancy changed her life with a complication that made everything harder. Here's something that is humiliating, but I don't know the father of my child. She turned to Toronto lab Vigard Acumetrics for a prenatal paternity test, but the company got the results wrong. After the baby was born, another lab named the right father. I'm very bitter towards the whole situation, honestly. Like, there's so much I could have avoided if I hadn't have gone through that. CBC News sent a producer inside the lab with a hidden camera to find out more. Hi. At least with this, it sounds like the accuracy is there because with the prenatal... Prenatal, it was never that accurate and it's expensive, it's a couple thousand dollars for a test. The owner, Harvey Tenenbaum, said he stopped selling prenatal paternity tests because they couldn't be trusted to identify the right dad. We literally have that test now. It's pretty good, but pretty good is not good enough. He said sometimes the tests were proven wrong right at the birth. Test the white guy and the baby came out black. What the hell's going on here? Experts say prenatal paternity tests are very accurate when done right, but a CBC News investigation has found multiple cases where Vigard named the wrong dad. These stories span a decade from Canada to the UK, the United States to Australia. Viagard, Acumen. Private commercial DNA labs like Viagard don't need a license to operate and Health Canada doesn't regulate them. This public policy expert says that's a problem. We need to protect the public. You can't underestimate the impact that results like this have on individuals. Dr. Harvey Tenenbaum, how are you? I'm Jorge Barrera. Tenenbaum didn't respond to multiple interview requests. When CBC News approached him outside his lab, Tenenbaum said mistakes happen. You know, you do tests? thousands of tests. Yeah, but... And half the errors are the collection problem. Because I know that you knew these tests were flawed, but you still no, kept selling No, no, the tests were never flawed. Tests are per the tests are accurate. We had a hidden camera, and we spoke to you about this, and you said you knew that they were wrong. Vigard stopped selling its prenatal paternity tests sometime in 2021. The main thing I want for Viagard is for it to close down. I don't think anyone would even imagine that it would still be open. It's still open and doing other types of DNA business. Jorge Barrera, CBC News, Ottawa.
It's a battle that many historians say gave rise to this nation, and today the flag at City Hall in Saskatoon flew at half-mast on the National Day of Remembrance of the Battle of Vimy Ridge. It marked the first time all four divisions of the Canadian all four divisions of the Canadian divisions fought together at Vimy Ridge. The First World War battle left 3,600 soldiers dead and more than 7,000 wounded. Flags were lowered at all city facilities. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back. This week's solar eclipse had a lot of people looking skyward. But a unique observatory in B.C. uses sound, not sight, to observe the sun. Camille Verna has more. Nested in an Okanagan Valley, far from urban interferences, the Dominion Radio Astrophysical Observatory is the only one in the country doing radio astronomy. It's here where they gather the radio waves of the solar system and listen to the stars. And as stars go, none are more important than the sun. The one that measures the solar flux is the one over there. The tiny one? The tiny one. These two dishes might be small, but they're very important, according to astronomer Andrew Gray. We're observing the nearest star. The other stars are all light years away. The sun is like minutes away, so it has a much bigger impact on the Earth than any other object in the universe. So when the sun hiccups, we want to know about it. Because sometimes the sun gets a little feisty. What we call a solar flare, a large release of energy on the surface of the sun. And those flares are often accompanied by an ejection of matter. If that matter crosses the Earth's orbit at the same time that the Earth is there, it has a huge impact on the Earth. This impact is called a solar storm, and it can damage satellites, power lines, and navigation systems. This is a record of a coronal mass ejection event in 1989 that caused a power outage in Quebec. You can see the amplitudes here are enormous. But most of the time, the sun is actually rather quiet. So what you want to know is, why is this uninteresting? <laughs> it's good news that there are no flares. This is the entire data set from 1947 to the current day of every measurement made with this experiment. It's the longest continuous record of solar radio emissions anywhere in the world. Historic and rich data that is widely used in the scientific community. In Saskatoon, Catherine McWilliams is researching the impact of solar storms on the upper atmosphere. Having these really long data sets are really nice to try to establish patterns and see how the behavior is common over a large number of events. And space weather centers around the world are using the information coming from Penticton to predict solar storms. The radio waves don't care if it's cloudy. We don't rely on counting sunspots or other means of measuring solar activity that relies on being able to see the sun. And this is important for understanding future behavior of the sun. From sunrise to sunset, they track the sun. Because listening in to the sun today helps predict its future. Camille Verne, CBC News, Penticton. This weather update is brought to you by Crestview Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Proud member of the Capital Automotive Group. And our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, joins me now. Can you level with me? I'll try to. I'll try my best. When is it going to rain? <laughs> <sighs> soon, soon. For some parts of the province, how about right now? We are seeing a little bit of that uh, rain moving through, uh, uh, particularly central regions, starting to expand a little bit uh, further south now. Uh, that from a low-pressure system in uh, northern Alberta. It's not a lot, though. That's the problem. These are isolated showers. There's really not a lot of rain coming from this. And uh, it'll probably kind of die out over the next little while here until we see another round of it come back tomorrow. Uh, Temperature-wise, though, 
Uh, still looking at uh, some pretty nice conditions, uh, almost identical temperatures through uh, south and central Saskatchewan into the mid-teens for a lot of us uh, heading into uh, the evening hours. Uh, still double digits. Those will likely be pulling back a little bit tomorrow as well. And it's been a little bit windy at times. Uh, gusts in the southwest uh, from the northwest, upwards of 40 to 50. And uh, that is also something we're going to contend with not only tomorrow, but in the days ahead. Wind, a pretty constant theme here. Tomorrow is probably the worst of it, gusting uh, 50 to 60 from the northwest through a good chunk of the province, save for maybe just uh, the far north. And then heading into Thursday, we see that still lingering in southeastern Saskatchewan, but another uh, push of that wind coming in as we head into the end of the week with another system moving in yet again. And uh, part of the reason that that is picking up is because we do have that instability, those showers moving in in this area of low pressure which is going to be departing the province uh, overnight tonight. Southwestern Saskatchewan, best chance for some showers and maybe some snow at times uh, in the overnight hours. I think this is primarily going to fall as rain, though. But by the time uh, we get to tomorrow morning, before it gets to Regina and the Weyburn Estevan area, it's out of here. But there is uh, the chance that we could see some pop-up showers and maybe isolated non-severe thunderstorms in east-central and southeastern Saskatchewan as we head into tomorrow. Again, very similar setup to today before things uh, more substantially clear out as we head into Thursday. Friday could bring some more messy weather for central portions uh, of the province. So for the north, with a little bit of rain moving through tonight, again, we're only looking for about half to one millimeter here. In southwestern Saskatchewan, we were hopeful that this would maybe bring upwards of five millimeters, but more recent projections showing probably in that kind of one to three millimeter range. Not great for the drought situation. The latest uh, Canadian drought monitor outlook showing much of the province abnormally dry. We have pockets still of uh, extreme drought in west central uh, parts of the province and that really extends uh, that drought conditions to Really, actually, much of the Prairie Provinces as well. No surprise there. Unfortunately, no substantial rain after tomorrow. We clear out and see those temperatures warming up closer to 20 degrees for the weekend. Still breezy here and there. That continuing into next week. Next best chance for, uh, for rainfall will likely be next Tuesday as temperatures uh, come down a little bit closer to normal. For Saskatoon, again, possible rain showers uh, here and there tomorrow and then a very similar setup for the rest of the week and into the weekend uh, before maybe a return to single-digit temperatures early next week with that rain. So we will hope, Sam, that uh, that rain a little later in the forecast uh, comes true. You lost me at thunderstorms tomorrow. Is that weird for this early in April? It's a little early for that, yes, but uh, definitely a possibility. All right. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. That is a look at the beautiful colors of tulips in full bloom in Abbotsford, B.C. The Tulip Festival was not supposed to open for another week, but mild winter temperatures have brought the blooms in early. The festival usually stretches until Mother's Day, but the owner of this farm says with the early start, the flowers may not last that long. We'll be back after the break. The parents of a teenager who shot and killed four of his classmates will spend the next 10 to 15 years in prison. James and Jennifer Crumley were both convicted of involuntary manslaughter for failing to prevent the attack. Their son, Ethan Crumley, killed his classmates in Michigan using a gun his parents had purchased for him. Katie Simpson reports from Washington. Nearly every aspect of this case represents a first in the United States. Jennifer and Jason Crumbly are the first parents in the U.S. to ever be convicted of involuntary manslaughter for failing to stop their son from carrying out a deadly mass shooting at his school and now must serve the maximum penalty, sentenced to between 10 and 15 years in prison. These convictions confirm repeated acts or lack of acts that could have halted an oncoming runaway train about repeatedly ignoring things that would make a reasonable person feel the hair on the back of their neck stand up. Jurors heard how the Crumbleys ignored their son's pleas for help with his mental health and purchased him a gun in the days before the shooting. The negligence was touched upon over and over and over again in a series of gut-wrenching victim impact statements. While you were hiding, I was planning her funeral. 
and why you were running away from your son and your responsibilities. I was forced to do the worst possible thing a parent could do. I was forced to say goodbye to my Madison. Both Jennifer and Jason Crumbly apologized for their son's actions and apologized for the harm that he caused. Though both had made arguments for leniency in their sentencing, James Crumbly had even asked to be released on parole. The families of the victims in this case have long argued the Crumblies showed a lack of remorse and failed to recognize their responsibility in this deadly shooting. And after the sentencing, they said they were pleased to see the maximum penalty applied. Katie Simpson, CBC News, Washington. And Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. And it'll be a windy start to the morning uh, tomorrow in Regina. Northwest gusts up to 50 kilometers an hour. Temperature's still not too bad. Mix of sun and cloud, but we're likely going to see uh, that cloud start to build in a little bit as we head into the afternoon and the chance of showers in the afternoon as well. Those winds gusting near 60 at times as we near the double digits. In Saskatoon, uh, looking for a similar start here. Uh, winds again still breezy for you. You're likely uh, you have a little bit less of a chance of showers in Saskatoon tomorrow, likely a little more sunshine still keeping the wind around though. Sure sign of spring in Regina is the beavers returning to Wascana Lake and uh, Andrew captured this excellent shot of a beaver swimming uh, through the lake there enjoying the beautiful uh, still chilly waters this time of year Sam. They are adorable but do not get too close. Yeah territorial <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> Thanks Ethan. You bet. And before we leave you a word about a word the name of a city in Alberta to be exact, and how people in Saskatchewan say it differently. From Good Question Saskatchewan, here's Leisha Grabinski. Saskatchewan's fastest growing city was Calgary. You heard him, he said Calgary. And if you're from Saskatchewan, you probably do too. Calgary. Uh, Calgary. Calgary. I mean, I was born in Calgary, but I was not raised there. So I don't know, I guess that's just what I'm used to hearing around here. If you move to that city like my friend Josh did, and you say, Calgary, it won't cut it. Well, hi there. My name is Josh Paget from the This Is Calgary podcast. Did you notice how I said that there? Calgary, not Calgary, not Calgary, but Calgary. It's taken me a long time to get there. See, I'm from Rosetown. I also probably said Gary or Calgary at some point in time, and it takes a lot of practice because if you're in the Stampede City, we can sniff you out pretty quick that you're not from here, it's like someone from Ontario saying Saskatchewan and a little part of our soul just kind of dies. So why do Saskatchewan people say Calgary? I'm the host of Good Question Saskatchewan, so I asked a linguist. Well, it kind of has to do with the history of the word and where the word comes from. The word Calgary itself isn't native to Canada. It's a Scots Gaelic word. Um, and this word was brought over by one of the commissioners named James McLeod, um, and he was originally born in Scotland. Uh, he brought over the word and is named after one of the castles in Scotland. So it's called Calgary Castle. There's two different hypotheses of what the original word was. One was um, Calgary. Mm -hmm. Another one was Calgary. And then I've also seen Calgary as well. Interesting. So these would be closer to like the, the, the Scots Gaelish pronunciation of the word. Right. So what would happen in this case is the cal would become cal, mm -hmm. the gary would become gary, right? And then you would end up with calgary or calgary. Um, so that might be what we consider kind of conservative pronunciations or like a, a pronunciation that is really old. And that's kind of just stayed with us here in this area since we're neighbors. If you live in Calgary and you're using the word all the time, chances are pretty good you're going to reduce that syllable or alight it or take it away. And you end up with Calgary. Calgary. So we've been left with a pronunciation that's actually probably closer to Scots Gaelic than anywhere else. Close to Scots Gaelic and also very Saskatchewan. And very Saskatchewan. Tomato, tomato, Calgary or Calgary, that is it for us tonight. For news anytime, you can head to our website, to our YouTube channel, or download the CBC News app. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.